last time on Dragon Ball Z. Uh, please don't vote up emergency. No. Oh, I'm afraid to click it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. Eleanor, please. All right. Attack on Japan, I guess. We are just... I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Like, casually playing Japan, here's boss music. Eleanor appears with three crossbowmen. This this warrior is dead. It is just dead. Trade with Sushiville from Sendai to try to grow this city, because this city actually has high production tiles, so it will make use of that growth. Oh, he lived! Actual god. So let's talk about what our strategy is to actually survive here. The only way that we survive here is... Uh, I mean, Eleanor has <laughs> nearly double our military. And it is a fighting retreat. We just pray that we can out compete the ai with double shot archers in defensive positions i have two double shot archers right now that is like the biggest power spike imaginable um we need to fall back to this mountain pass i think i can get a kill with a with a with a scout here and he'll be able to retreat easily i may be able to sneak out a settler and grab another city over here but i absolutely am going to grab walls because if egypt decides to jump in on this it's over for me so i just have to have walls on sendai to defend i can defend with units on the west but sendai is going to have to fight on its own egypt uh, have low military, could wait on walls. The problem is if Egypt creates even a single unit with their 68 signs, I'm dead. So the walls need to be there in order to buy me time, just to buy me a few turns to defend the city. So unfortunately, plus I build the wa walls at double speed for the next five turns because of the because of the World Congress. This is the best time. If I'm ever going to put walls in Sendai, this is the best time to do it. The double, the double shots here are super hardcore saving me. I never thought that like, ooh, galleys are actually terrifying. They do so much damage. Uh, what I can do here is I can fire once and then take a promotion here. So I'll do even more damage to naval. I think I can get this kill. So that's Indonesia's military dealt with. Who's Eleanor at war with? Looks like it's just me. Well, that's life, I suppose. My scouts have actually done work surprisingly this game. Get a fishing boat tile up. That's another growth and gold tile. All right, here comes the swordsman. Thankfully, the AI isn't like giga smart, so they will make mistakes like sending units out on their own. And I do have double shot archers. Again, my saving grace, my one saving grace this game. I have my theater square in Sushiville. I need to get the amphitheater. What I need is culture and science to get back into this game. It's the only way I'm surviving here. 12 turns for an amphitheater is a hell of a long time though. So maybe I go for settlers because settlers are half the cost and I can maybe get two cities here, one. Two, three, two. I can get two cities, get access to Jade. All right. I wasn't expecting the teleporting cavalry, but I should have been. We need to kill this cavalry because it's a very scary unit. Man, double shot archers defending a city is actually gross. It is disgusting. I knew what I was signing up for when I decided to go rogue and just start attacking the world. I do have a horseman over here, but it's kind of just keeping scout of like either whether or not settlers are coming. Oh, you went into the water. She's just practically giving me the free kill. And I say, yo, a titan, run! We found a titan, a goddamn Eleanor crossbowman. All right, scout, sacrifice yourself. All right, now I need my horseman over because a scout is coming to replace him. I don't remember what the thing they shout is when they see a titan, but my god, that's how I feel right now. Now, magically, I forgot to research the swordsman. Rest in peace, scout, you did your job. Served me well. That's Korean. Well, you know what? I'm ignorant, okay, of their languages. I, I've, I know like four words in those languages, so I'm, you know what? I'll take the L. I'm ignorant. It's unfamiliar to me. The only thing I do know is that Nani means what? I don't know how I'm even going to defend this. Dutch is 104 sites. Listen, guys, all right, listen. If you guys can't be trusted to not point out how far behind I am, I'm just going to turn that off, all right? If you guys can't, you just, just stop pointing it out, all right? <laughs> just... <laughs> I don't need to know how bad I'm doing. I'm well aware. All right, maybe I can kill this crossbowman. All right, we have taken down a titan. All right, who said it? Oh, okay. You got, you, all right. If you guys promise to be good, I'll give you back. I'll give you back the yield hub thing. Oh my god, the production in this city is actually sad. 100 science deficit. Oh, didn't I have another city? Yeah, this one. City renames eventually happen. Well, if we're running to the new world, Ancestral Hall is the play. If we're staying and fighting and going rogue, then Warlord's Throne is the play. Here's the thing. I would love, 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 love to go rogue and destroy Indonesia right now. But the problem is that Eleanor is also in this war. And she won't take peace for at least two turns and probably longer because she's in an emergency war. So she could just teleport out of the fog of war and ruin my day. 
like an anime character. Willard's Throne, Ancestral Hall, Audience Chamber. I think... I think Ancestral Hall has the best payoff here if I can find an empty island. We'll grab Connoisseur for the extra science. It's not much, but it's an honest living. They're the crossbows of doom that I was worried about. I could possibly kill a crossbowman this turn with a double shot from my level 6 guy, but then he would take a city shot, which is scary, so I'm just going to retreat him. Play it safe. I can finally get an industry here, which is a 20% culture boost to my capital, which is huge, I might add. Look at this, 4 food, 3 production. This tile is carrying me, dude. 20% production boost. Feels good. Uh, really, really good culture in here. I think we just see if we can, you know, sneak in a couple extra settlers around here. Use them for coastal stuff. Oh, somebody. Venice just got captured by that guy. Spooky. All right, here comes the first crossbowman. And he's down. Enemy crossbowman defeated. Let's pack it in, boys. Um, if I'm looking at this settler and I'm planning out a city, I think if I want to get two extra cities on here to try to secure just a tiny shred of extra land, potentially gold, I reckon the safest way to do it is to settle on the southmost coastline away from Egypt. That prevents them from settling any closer to me, and it also gives me the best loyalty situation that I could possibly get. If I settle on this tile like I plan to, I would be able to get a mediocre harbour, plus four, as well as a pretty decent campus of plus three, which is pretty much all I would expect the city to do for me. Alternatively, yeah, I think, I think this is like a reasonable thing to expect the city to do for me. So I'll settle here, immediately work the cattle, Boom, the city now has cattle tile working. Campus or harbor is the real question. I do need to pick up celestial navigation soon. I'll go ironworking celestial navigation for harbors. A couple harbors for trade routes and gold and also ability to build boats. I definitely go for granary monument first because those are just insane long-term value. I think I'll place the campus because that's how I actually get back into the game. But granary monument um, just gives you... The reason you go for granary and monument is because granary gives you plus one food. So that's basically like having 50% faster growth if your city is working on average two food tiles, which is what you should be working on average um, in most cities. So a granary is like a 50% growth bonus most of the early game. A monument, on the other hand, also saves you a ton of gold because it spreads the borders of your city. Granaries also give you more housing so the city can grow f more population in total, which lets you get more districts. So I think granary and monument are usually what I open with in my cities. A city without a granary and monument can be useful, but a city with a granary and monument will always outcompete a, uh, a non-granary monument city in the long run. My people settle where they please, Egypt. Apologies. Coming to blows with Egypt would be scary, but I may not have many, many other options. I have a builder. I do have the money to improve a fishing tile. This would give the city a uh, a workable tile. There's no barbarians in this map because I turned off barbarians to make it harder or ha harder for me, easier for the AI. I'll get another builder. Did I ever unlock feudalism? I did, and I never plugged in the builder policy card. But that makes sense because I have the settler card plugged in. All right, we've got man at arms coming from Indonesia. Now we'll never be able to take their city unless we get crossbow tech. But we can deal with. Um, we can deal with man in arms i've almost got a fully leveled 420 experience archer it's insane this builder is coming down here to improve things like these crabs every tile that i have that is workable is a massive advantage so taking this fishing tile from being a two food one production tile one gold tile right that's a surplus of one gold that's the whole surplus of this tile if i put a fishing boat on this tile right here it goes to being a three food, one gold tile. So now the food surplus of this tile is one food and one gold, which makes it way more workable than most of the other tiles in the city. Like, what am I going to work on? One food, one gold tile? Let's get real. Um, it's not happening. I'll probably put a farm here too. Once I have iron working, I could do a battering ram plays. If I wanted to go for samurai, I could do a battering ram play. Could I sell things? The AI hates me, so getting gold outside of war is near impossible. But I could maybe... No one wants to buy horses. No one wants to buy this. No one wants to buy my silk. Yeah, everyone hates my guts. I'm at war with everyone. Maybe I could peace out Eleanor. If I can peace out Eleanor, she won't take peace. Um, what about Pachacuti? He will take peace. He won't pay me anything. But maybe being at peace with him means I can sell him things. He'll buy my that for 8 gold. Okay, yeah. So he'll buy my silk for 8 gold. That's a huge deal, getting a peace. Maybe Wilhelmina will also peace me out. Wilhelmina will piece me out, which is perfect. So I can sell her a silk as well. I get 10 gold per turn. Boom. Perfect. Um, I'm going to divert away from Ancestral Hall because I want to place my campus in here. Campus is more important to me. Actually, Ancestral Hall is more important, but I will place the campus. So uh, 
we have access to samurai which are 48 melee combat strength in conjunction with a battering ram we could maybe use a samurai to batter down this city maybe possible what am i going for here merchant republic or do i go for monarchy do i go for merchant republic or monarchy let's have a let's have a little bit of an examination of these choices here merchant republic gives me two economic policy cards two diplomatic policy cards and one military policy card and a wild card it gives me 10% gold in all cities and 15% production towards districts. This is useful if I want to go for an economic style approach. Monarchy gives me plus one housing per level of walls, plus two diplomatic favor, and plus 50 influence points. This is really useful if I wanted to make plays to take control of some of these city-states. These are all very cultural city-states, so I don't know if I'm going to make plays to take control of them. I wouldn't mind taking control suzerainty of a city-state. And the only one I can really take here is Ayutthaya, who is over here. Um, but that would give me 10% of the culture equal to the construction cost when I finish building. So that's not a bad one. It's not the greatest one either. More importantly, by taking control of Ayutthaya, I would get much better scouting information of the map. And so this better scouting information is super useful. Also, it looks like Ayutthaya has like a massive swarm of man-at-arms that maybe perhaps in conjunction with a military push of some kind from me, I could maybe deal with Egypt and take her on like with a very very special timing attack maybe if I had the gold I'm not going to get the gold in a reasonable amount of time I think having weighed my options here monarchy is quite strong because as a two wild cards and an economic and two military merchant republic is strong just because of uh the inherent effects but the inherent effects of monarchy isn't bad the 50 percent influence is a big deal two military policies and three economic policies is like a really good spread whereas merchant republic is one military policy and three economic policies if you include wild cards. Which could I have sooner? This would take three techs. This would be three, nine, ten. So this is 21 turns, say. Whereas this is two techs, 30 turns. So I could have them in roughly equal amounts of time. Vilnius got a settler? Oh my god, who did they kill? Who knows? Hear me out. If I... If I could get a battering ram over here. Like slowly. Hang on a minute. If I... If I get levy... I would never keep the loyalty in Vilnius. That's the thing. I could kill it, but I would never keep the loyalty. Loyalty is the thing that holds me back. Loyalty. Well, at least we have a dead zone in that desert. I'd say getting a battering ram could be an interesting move. They do only have ancient walls in here. You're trying to grow. So what are you lacking? Definitely work this tile. I will work the crabs. When do plantations get extra food is a question I should ask. Plantations get plus one food at feudalism. So right now these are plus food tiles and I need the city to grow so that I can place its industrial zone in the harbor. So I'm going to prioritize trying to grow this city. For now, just put some turns into the entertainment complex. I haven't even had a chance to think about building wonders this game. Imagine actually building wonders. Jesus Christ. From Eris when you trade route, discover. Yeah, I think I'll go for Hicks on Traconis for this era because this is potentially um, a lot of Eris score when I discover new continents or natural wonders. Monumentality is okay too. It's like worth a few points. I don't think catapults are going to help me much here in this situation. These aren't going to help me. Apprenticeship might help. I could go straight for universities and try to tech my way out of my problems. That feels right to me. Or I could try to go to the new world and settle my way out of my issues. I think I'm going to pick up apprenticeship and education and then go for cartography. Do I want to harvest this tile? I may as well harvest this tile because it gets me my entertainment complex sooner. Yeah, you can denounce me all you want. I don't actually care. So the second I get Eleanor to take peace, she wants too much money. We got a plantation in here that's a 2 2 2 2 tile, only missing faith really. Still an incredible, incredible tile. This city is absolutely 100% going to need a builder. It just sucks that Liang is the in, in Timisoara. I'm going to take this marsh and place my encampment because this encampment is actually worth plus two science because it's adjacent to two campuses. And also, it'll serve as a place where I can train military using Victor. The really hard thing I'm finding in the city of Timisoara is finding production. So that's where the real struggle is coming in here for me. So I may have to re-establish Liang somewhere else, but we'll we'll look into it in the near future. Maybe it would be a good idea for me to pick up shipbuilding and then use my scouts before I get education uh, to see if there's any settleable islands down here that are worthwhile. Oh right, I need to take this out. This is doing damage to me. Right. Plus, because I took hit Hicks on Tricones, I get um I get error score for fighting boats. If I take double shots, it's bad. We got a battering ram. I could get the amphitheater and that's worth five culture. Or I could get a samurai in the same number of turns. I think the samurai would increase the probability that Eleanor would be willing to take peace. And also, it would potentially give me the power I need to break through Surabaya and take it over. So now that I've improved two uh, tiles in Yaskilia, whose name I forget how to pronounce. Both of these are two food tiles, which means they will produce extra enough food to supply the city with growth alongside the... Uh, granary in the city that'll mean that the city will grow I'm going to place a mine here to give the city a little bit of production and then I'm going to move this builder over to Nagoya so that I can maybe get a jade tile 
which will give me a little bit of production in Nagoya to help build the city's infrastructure. Well, actually, I won't be able to do that. I just realized I'm killing this guy. But that's okay. Uh, perfect. This crossbowman came forward into my line of fire, which means I get to obliterate him now. I don't care about charismatic leader anymore. I just need to get as much gold as I can from my own voice. Right. What were we talking about? What in the name of unholy Christ were we doing? Okay. So let's talk about the situation that we're in. We are playing as Japan. We have 32 signs per turn. Yeah, you know, she's making 100 signs. So she's got a little bit over three times our signs. Uh, technologically, she is uh, 15 techs ahead of me. She's got twice our signs. It's pretty bad in terms of total technologies researched. The only person we're going to kill is Gatarja this game. Uh, for an appreciable future, our best bet is to escape and try to find the new world. So with that in mind, we're currently elbow deep in a war with Eleanor and Gatarja. Um, so that's not going great for us. Hopefully my super high level archers will protect us here okay i'm getting denounced by the incas that's fine at the very least we have clawed back from being down um 10 times science okay this warrior is kind of spooky let's get a samurai and the reason we're getting the samurai is first of all for the plus four era score but also it upgraded our city combat strength of 40 this used to be 28 so this is going to give us enough resistance against this man, man at arms to where we can buy ourselves a little bit of time and survive through any of this BS that we're going to be coming up against. I really do want to kill Rapa Nui. Can I actually get my cavalry to sneak down here and get in position for some potential pillages? I think I could. Also, I need to turn this off. Um, did we decide to go for Merchant Republic or did we decide to go for Monarchy? I think we decided to go for Merchant Republic for the 15% production, production towards districts because that would help me build some certain things. I would like to hold on to Suzumti of Ayuthia. It would be nice to also break the Suzumti of Vilnius because that's worth era score. And I may be able to go into a Golden Age here. A Golden Age Industrial Era could be a saving grace for me. So Samurai is a replacement for the Man at Arms. So he's slightly stronger, which is good. I can pop him into this city and make the city very strong and maybe get a little bit of experience on him. My horseman, I'm going to step. Oh, I'm not at war with Rapa Nui. Why am I at war with Rapa Nui? Because nobody is suzerain. That's unfortunate. Well, horseman can just sit there. Let's shoot. Let's shoot to soften. Attack with the samurai. When you click on the samurai, it makes a like shinging noise, knife noise. That's like really upsetting actually to hear. Um, so we got our encampment, which is worth plus two science. We'll go ahead and grab our library because that's another plus two science. We just need to claw our way back into the game by getting as much science as possible. Uh, we got our entertainment complex, which is plus three, plus three culture on this theater square. So it's plus four culture now in here. So we're getting really high adjacency using planning because uh, entertainment complex next to a theater square gives a plus two because we're playing Japan. It's an extra one that's adjacent to a campus too. Uh, so talking about the city of Yaskilda, I like how you can rename cities that you've occupied. I could pick up two amenities here. Alternatively, I could work on a military unit or a builder. An eight turn builder seems pretty reasonable. I'm going to grab an eight turn builder. I'm going to reassign Liang to Vyaskilda uh, because this is where I actually have production time to build a builder. I like though that theoretically I've only actually had 40 turns to play this game. Okay, so Rapa Nui's at war with me again, which is perfect. Uh, can a horseman survive a double shot from crossbows? I am next to coast, so I get plus five movement or plus five combat strength. I don't think I can. What I might be able to do is step in and pillage this, take the double shots and then retreat. I think I might be able to do that next turn. I know what I can do as well if I position myself very carefully. You got a promotion. I have three double shot archers now, by the way, just in case you're wondering how powerful my military is. That should give you a hint that I'm able to pump out like double shots on these guys. The second I get my hands on crossbowmen and field cannons, it's over for whoever I declare war on. These are these are like giga archers. So we're going to step forward. We'll get the pillage. And my hope is that the AI will shoot this guy and not this guy, because then I'll be able to get a pillage with him next turn. These guys are also both adjacent to coastline. So they have plus five combat strength on defense. I hope he shoots him. Ah, 22, 31. So that's a little bit too much. Let's get the horseman to fall back. I'll get another pillage. So we just got nearly 300 gold out of that, which is amazing. I unlocked the tech. Okay, we got our samurai. I'm going to bring this samurai to the west. Make your way around. So two samurai should be enough. I can start thinking about my third district in the capital. I'm going to go ahead and get my amphitheater now because that's actually worth plus four culture. It'll be worth more when I get to peace with Rapa Nui, because that's another plus one for the amphitheater. I can probably safely bring one archer with this samurai to the west, but any more than that, I don't think it'll work. She wants peace and she'll give me stuff. I'm gonna take peace with Eleanor. Oh my God, another settler. I might be able to grab this trader too with a pillage. So now I can, this, this free settler is huge here. 
um, because I might be able to grab this one. Oh man, okay, so we had a really tough set a few turns there, but I think we're bringing it back. Hello Egypt, nice to meet you. So I will position you here. You come up this way to pillage him, retreating, settler. I will bring the double shot archer forward, ready and in position. This um, trader is being used to grow my weak city. So Nagoya is going to be a relatively powerful and useful city. So I'm going to use a trader to try and improve it. Um, the city of Sushiville could possibly make use of a harbor if we take a look at it. It has a lot of really low quality tiles which is a bit of a problem. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to spend my gold to actually buy myself a builder. I haven't made many builders this game, so my builders are relatively cheap and I can get four build charge builders for quite cheap, which will help. We'll wait till next turn. Yeah, Indonesia definitely wants... To... See, Indonesia has the right priority. She's trying to build cities because she's like not under threat, so she feels relatively safe. It's just the AI kind of bugged out and probably was trying to like send the city southwest or something because there might be islands down here. And then the, the, the settler was just like, oh, I'll go that way. All right, we are in position. Boom. Boom. Samurai will do severe damage here. Now I could pillage or I could attack. I need to break these walls as fast as possible. The faster I break the walls, the better. Okay. So we'll send this to Sushiville because we're looking for production. Although Timishora is 2 2. 2 2 is better than, I think, 3 1 because it gets the granary faster. Okay, we lost an archer. That was kind of to be expected. I thought I might get away with putting an archer there, but I didn't. It was the addition of the quadri ream, but that's okay. It was a double shot archer, but it's not the end of the world. I still have two of them and I still have some highly leveled archers. It hurts and it sucks. Don't get me wrong, but it's well within the realm of what we might expect here. We need to rush down this city. So I'm more than willing to expend the lives of my samurai to, uh, to grab it. We also have access to Merchant Confederation now. So we can finally get away from autocracy and plug in Merchant Republic. I don't need colonization anymore. I definitely need natural philosophy for that plus 10 science. Unit maintenance cost reduction is good. I will start producing more things soon. Gold from trade routes, extra four culture is pretty strong. Influence towards envoys is good. Now that we have exploration, we need to start thinking about what our late game plans involve. I definitely feel like uh, getting to diplomatic service and getting access to spies will be a big part of how we get back into this game, especially if I make good use of the Machiavellianism card and the extra spy ability. So we're going to work on that. If I look at Okayama, it has its granary and its monument. It's growing pretty well. It's working improved tiles. I think I buy this extra fish tile because it's such high quality, then it'll be working for relatively okay tiles. I think I'm safe to go for a campus here. I'm okay with a samurai dying here. Fully, fully okay with it. But I also just won't like let one die for no reason. Let's attack with the horseman. So now the walls in the city are broken. We can fortify and then after you fortify, you pillage. That way I get the combat strength advantage and he'll get a chance to heal, I think. Although that might be a movement thing. Um, we got our builder in Jivaskilia, whatever it's called. This builder was coming over to the capital to improve it. And then you were heading over to Okayama to improve it. Two extra builders. I know I could have been plugging in the extra builder uh, charge policy, but um, I think the culture gold and production or yeah, all, like I need all this stuff. And I don't have a whole lot of tiles to improve. I guess you could make an argument in science deficit. I should pick up construction. Yeah, 100 science deficit is probably a good place to get a builder so i'll grab another four charge builder and send it over there um and i'm gonna go ahead and get an arena okay so we got a library in 100 science deficit which is now contributing to a plus 11 science positive for me it is low on amenities which is a little bit of a problem it's going to take some time to grow but i'm okay with that uh, primarily this city lacks production growth like a little bit of food now i reckon that war is in my future. So if I pick up a barracks, this will be plus one production as well as plus one housing in the city, which will contribute to the city potentially growing and be more productive because the extra housing helps. And I might be able to make some sort of infantry based play for the future. Sushiville, I definitely feel like I need to improve this mine and the wheat. So both of these tiles are highly productive tiles as they stand. I'm four era score away from nailing a golden age. I think I'm just going to vote up Hinduism because I don't care. And then I'll say, I see a lot of cultural city-states on the map, so I'm going to vote up cultural city-states. So it looks like cultural city-states passed and Hinduism passed. I have access to Terracotta Army now. Not that, not that I would build it unless... No, somebody's already built it, I think. No, actually. I could theoretically build Terracotta Army. Terracotta Army is interesting. Uh, all current units gaining promotion level. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, oh my god, I can take the final. I have created a monster, a ranged unit with every single promotion. And yet it can continue to level. Wait, what happens when you hit level 9? 
Does anyone know what happens when you hit level nine? Oh my god. We're gonna find out. We are gonna find out. We need we need to name this archer, okay? This is a seven a level nine this is a level eight archer, okay? That we this was, I think this was like actually the first archer we built this game, and he has fought I wanna say that in eighty percent of the turns of this game, this man has shot an enemy. We need to give him a name. What are we gonna call this guy? The Invincible Snipers. Tony two times. I don't know what the Tony two times meme is. Tempered one. DJ Diaper. Morbus. Big Gulp Slurpee. Chad Archer. Legolas. Call him Morbus because he's carrying you. Shut up. Yeah, good. <laughs> just, just so you guys know, every time you gift a sub or you subscribe or whatever, Morbus has to edit that out. So every time you send one of those in, you make his job harder. So uh, keep on sending them. Thank you guys so much. Holy crap. Whiskey Arrows. Simo Haya would fit into the... Yeah, okay. I'll take that name. We're going to name him after Simeo Heia, which is a famous Finnish sniper. This dude never misses. He has every promotion. Plus 5 combat strength, plus 10 in garrison, plus 7 against land, against districts, exercises the zone of control. Like, this dude Fox. What's the zone of control on an archer? I've never had this promotion before. <laughs> oh, Simo was a sniper. He had 500 confirmed kills with iron sights. Oh, damn. That's impressive. Let's get rid of this quad. I can sneak a horseman through and pillage this campus for science. Do I keep it or do I pillage it? Let me have a look. Well, playing as Japan, this would have an extra two adjacency. I guess I keep it. You need to get him all the way to a machine gun. Don't let him die. Dude, this archer is going to become a machine gun. 100% going to become a machine gun. So I kind of have to think about what I have to build in my capital. I'm pretty reasonably happy with the setup that it has right now. It's making good food and production um, and it has a reasonable amount of extra housing. I think I might crack down like two extra farms here or like an extra farm if i wanted to grow the city to be bigger the harbor would be the way to go if i want to keep it at a relatively small size then i would go for a different district what would be a good idea for an information era ranged unit so if you're thinking about the roles of unit i think it's actually okay that it stops at machine guns you know there does every role and class of unit doesn't have to exist in every era like honestly you could probably get rid of mechanized infantry or merge ranged and melee units or something or figure it out. If you were really hell bent on keeping machine guns, you would probably uh, you would probably want to keep the field cannon theme and change machine guns to uh, mortars in the like modern era or something, and then have them be like light mortar like light rocket mortars or something in the atomic or information era maybe information era range unit looks like a mortar mechanized mortars like this give them plus one movement give them two range pew 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 pew, pew. so let me tell you what i'm thinking here i'm thinking in my head that i want to do harbor and the reason i want to do harbor in sushiville is for two big reasons the first of all reason is that i get an extra trader traders allow me to do interesting things in terms of empire-wide infrastructure it also gives me extra housing and extra tiles to work that's the really really important part sushiville is essentially out of tiles right it has two more tiles that it could work before it starts to start working specialist if i get a harbor in here these coastal tiles become workable and that opens up options for me in terms of growing the city bigger additionally uh pingala is in this city and pingala has connoisseur and researcher so he's getting uh some pretty good value from that so every population that i can grow in this city actually contributes a lot to my empire so if i get a plus three harbor uh, that's pretty solid and by getting this harbor i actually set myself up for a potentially really strong district like a neighborhood down the line here in the late game so that's something to consider as well um, which would give an extra adjacency to both of these districts or i could do something more mundane like a late game holy site or something here but it, it opens up options right um this farm can go the way of the dodo so unfortunately one of my scouts died although i do feel confident to go out onto the water because i removed barbarians from the game that's the one the big advantage of removing barbs i have access to libraries now which is going to change how i play make sure we kill that and we're going to continue to bombard this city. There's nothing in here for me to pillage. And I think I can hold the loyalty of this city. And maybe by controlling this city, I'll be able to get another city in this desert area. Possibly on this river to claim these relatively bad tiles. So we have access to education. So now we can spam universities for science. But I think I'm going to head straight for cartography now. And the second that this war is over, I'm going to start spamming. And I mean spamming settlers. Speaking man, this city's production is just horrendous and it's spawning rebels too let's go for intelligence agency this city needs above all else uh trade routes put into it who do i promote i think i should start promoting reina um, because the use of reina 
in some of my future cities could be quite valuable. In particular, I could use Reina's um, forestry management tax collector and contractor promotions to not only generate a lot of gold, but also use that gold to produce many districts. So I feel like this is the right kind of a direction to go. All right, we improve the fish here. So that's a four food tile, very strong. We can use our spare workers to go explore because I don't really have tiles to improve anymore. There's no point improving tiles. She wants peace. I refuse peace, not accepting it. Slowly chipping the city down. We can almost take it. What happens if I smash all three of these guys in? Okay, I can take it next turn. Perfect. Right, let's get as much experience on our guys as we possibly can. You're not too far from a level, so we'll get a shot on you. We'll get a shot on you. You're already max level, but I want to find out what happens when I hit max level. Like max, max, max level. We'll grab it with a samurai because the samurai should promote. That will kill Gatarja, generate me a ton of grievances with the entire world. The world basically hates me now. Well, it should next turn, basically. But... I have finally secured what you could call an empire. Now remember, we had one city at turn 100 or, or turn 94. At turn 94, we had one city. It has been, we are, in, we are in a golden age. We have, this is the comeback. We have come back from the brink, the literal brink of destruction. This game almost broke me today. And we have come back from that brink to build an actual empire. And I'm going to rename this city after the first chatter to type the word potato. We'll have the city renamed after them. Go. <clears throat> Wambert was the fastest. Thank you, Wambert. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this video, this live stream. We will pick it back up tomorrow. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.